Hello everyone, I'm Li Kongzhang from the University of Science and Technology of China. I'm sorry I'm not able to attend the conference in person, but thanks to the committee, I can participate online. It's an honor for me to be here again at QCLIP 2023 to share our recent work among the quantum cryptography community. Today, I will talk about our works on high-rate quantum key distribution exceeding 100 megabits per second key rate, featured in a high-speed and stable system. To give you an outline of this talk, I, will, I would like to first introduce the background and challenges of high-rate QKD. Following that, I will introduce our BB84 system in four parts, which are the laser source, the modulators, the detectors, and the post-processing system. In the end, I will summarize our results and provide some outlook. So, most importantly, why do we need high key rate in QKD? High key rates are essential for supporting high bandwidth applications, such as real-time video conferencing, distributed storage encryption, and large-scale data transfer between massive users. These applications demand num numerous encryption keys for both security and efficiency. High key rates ensure QKD can provide robust security while meeting modern communication demands. Therefore, key rate is listed as one of the practical challenges for QKD systems. Then the next question is, how much key rate do we need to find the killer application for QKD itself? Well, some perceptions said for the data storage use case, the key generation rate should be in 1 gigabit per second scale using one time pad. Unfortunately, we are still not very close to this goal. To achieve a higher key rate in QKD, mostly three protocols are adopted, BB84, high dimensional and continuous variable protocols. Their state of the art key rates can be represented by these three works. Currently, the highest real-time secret key rate is 13.7 megabits per second over a 2 dB channel, which is two orders of magnitude lower than the goal of 1 gigabit per second. Therefore, we have a long road to the goal and we aim to study how to push the key rate of QKD further. For a BB84 system, as an example, we think there are three hardware challenges, which are how to generate high pulse rate and face randomized light pulses, how to maintain no error rate in high speed modulation, and how to detect large photon counts with high efficiency. In our work, we use a high speed distributed feedback laser, a low error silicon photonic transmitter, and multi pixel superconducting nanowire single photon detector with a high efficiency to solve these three issues. So, the setup of our, of our system is as the, the figure shows. We use uh, one decoy intensity and four encoding state efficient BB84 protocol. And we generate the polarization states at 2.5 GHz clock rate with 0.4% quantum bit error rate. We also developed 8 pixel SNSPDs that can detect at most 552 million photons per second with 62% efficiency. To extract keys in real time, we achieved a post-processing system with a maximum throughput of 344 megabits per second on average. We also implement time synchronization and polarization compensation techniques to stabilize our system over fiber channels. I will talk more details in the following. So firstly, the laser source. To determine the driving conditions for the distributed feedback laser, often one can numerically simulate the light output using red equations, which will take a lot of time. So instead, we take an experimental route. First, we use the minimum pulse width of our electrical driver, which is 120 picoseconds, and we set the bias current of the driver just below the threshold of the laser. 
Then we tune the pulse amplitude of the electrical driving cyclos before the second relaxation oscillation appears. In this way, we can generate level and low jitter pulses with randomized phases with a width of less than 45 picoseconds. For the modulator part, we use the silicon photonic modulator chip, and the layout is shown in the left figure. Our chip integrates one intensity modulator for decoy state modulation, one polarization modulator to generate four BB84 states, and three cascaded diodes to attenuate the light to single photon level. We have also performed optoelectronic packaging for the chip, including airtight sealing and thermal electric cooler packaging for better stability of the chip. Our polarization modulator uses the thermal optic modulator to bias the ratio of horizontal and vertical polarizations. And we use the carrier depletion modulator with a high bandwidth to modulate four BB84 states at high speed. Then the two-dimensional grating coupler at the end is used as a path to polarization converter. In this way, arbitrary polarization states can be modulated at a high speed. However, the reverse voltage applied to the high-speed carrier depletion modulator cause the change of carrier concentration. This will change the refractive index and absorption rate at the same time, which causes unwanted phase-dependent loss, and this will decrease the fidelity of the generated polarization states. In order to generate, generate polarization states with high extinction ratio, we simulate the effect of phase-dependent loss on the polarization states as a guide for the experiment, and then we carefully tune the bias and driving amplitude of the two modulators on our chip to achieve an optimized performance of the transmitter. In the end, we obtain an average extinction ratio of 23.7 dB and a cuba of 0.4%. Another important trait of this work is that we introduce multi-pixel superconducting nanowire single photon detectors to our QED system. These two 8 pixel detectors align the meandering nanowires parallelly. Therefore, the total efficiency, which is around 80%, remain almost the same as normal detectors. In the meanwhile, each nanowire in this detector is shorter, leading to smaller dead time. Moreover, in the multi-pixel uh, superconducting nanowire single photon detectors. When one pixel is dead, others can still fire when the photons come. As a result, the multi-pixel device must improve the recovery time of our system over single pixel device. The recovery time is shorter than one nanosecond, realizing a maximum count rate of 340 microns per second. Unfortunately, at a high photon count rate, the interval between two detection events is small. The electronic output of the detector, which are the pulses shown in the left figure, will pile up as the yellow arrows shows. The amplitude of the adjacent pulses are clearly different. This results in the detection time screw in the case of threshold discrimination, and the right figure shows the time screw at different detection times intervals. The shorter intervals are the, R, the larger detection time screw will be. The time screw can be as large as 400 picoseconds when the two pulses are only 7 nanoseconds away. This leads to a high cuba of 7% 7, 7 in the back-to-back -back scenario or zero kilometer fiber connection. We solve this problem by correcting the time screw in the post processing. Based on characterization results of the single photon detectors in advance, and the cuba dropped significantly to 0.8% in the same scenario. 
As for high-speed post-processing, our previous works have studied the error correction and privacy amplification algorithms separately. For error correction, we choose cascade code for the following reasons. Firstly, it is a restless code and has good Cuba fluctuation adaptability. Secondly, when the Cuba is as low as 1%, as in our case, the speed and efficiency are both better. Moreover, its computational resource consumption is less than that of other codes. To meet the, to meet the demand for high-speed post-processing, we also designed a privacy amplification scheme combining multilinear modular hashing and modular arithmetic hashing algorithm. It has the following three main advantages. Firstly, it can provide higher processing speed using the same computational resource. Secondly, it can support larger block size without causing a significant decrease in processing speed. And finally, the underlying module of this algorithm requires the use of large number multiplication, which can be implemented at high speeds. In order to verify the capability of our post-processing system, we run the post-processing on two CPU platforms communicating via 50 km standard fibers based on the developed algorithms. By balancing the computational resources between information reconciliation and privacy amplification, we achieve an average throughput of 344 megabits per second. This speed is faster than the safety key rate generated use, using a 10 km fiber channel, proving the real-time key generation capability of our system. Finally, we are able to generate a secret key rate as high as 115 megabits per second over a 10 km standard fiber channel. Besides, we also applied time synchronization and polarization compensation techniques to compensate for the drift in the fiber and stabilize the whole QGD system. Time synchronization is achieved by a sync laser with, with a slightly different wavelength, which is frequency multiplexed with the classical communication channel. The sync laser is are then detected by a photon detector on the detector side and the generated electrical signals are used to compensate for the time drift between the transmitter and the receiver. As for the polarization feedback, we use strong calibration pulses, which are prepared and sent periodically, and the corresponding cuba is used as a feedback signal, which is then transformed to control the electrical polarization controllers. This promises a real-time alignment of the polarization to the original one. We test our system robustly over long runtime and long fiber channel. The results show that our QKD system can remain low cuba over 50 hour continuous run on the 50 standard fiber channel and can generate even positive case over 328 kilometer fibers. To sum up, our work bridges the gap between theoretical possibilities and real-world implementations in QGD key rates. Improving the secret key rate from 10 megabits per second to 100 megabits per second. We have also noticed other recent hybrid QGD works based on continuous variable protocols. Still, the related practical issues of them, including final key security proof against general attacks and the fast implementation of information reconciliation for discrete modulation CVQKD remain to be resolved. In the next step, to reach the goal of 1 gigabit per second key rate and beyond, further system improvement with a higher repetition rate and lower cuba is necessary. We could also utilize wavelength division multiplexing and multiple transmitters to maximum to maximize the channel bandwidth. Meanwhile, since the continuous variable and high dimensional QKD protocols have the potential to generate more bits in one pulses, 
than the BB84 protocol. Contributions from theoretical and experimental improvements in these protocols are also foreseeable in the near future. That's all. Thank you for, for your attention. Okay, thank you very much for the fabulous presentation. Uh, the question is, can you hear us at the moment? Yeah, can we yes, hear, of and, course. And can, can we, we hear, hear you? Great. Voice? Both of those are true. Okay. Awesome. So let's see if there are questions in the room here. Scanning around. Uh, I, I'm going to start by asking one. You mentioned doing uh, synchronization using this scheme. What sort of time synchronization to what, what accuracy or what precision can you get the time synchronized? Oh, yeah. Okay. So uh, we use another sync laser, which is um, which has a little bit different uh, wavelength uh, than the signal laser, and we transmit it. Uh, we wavelength uh, multiplex it uh, to the same fiber channel and uh, detect it use the photon photon detector at the at the receiver side, and we use the uh, the electrical signal of the photon detector as a sync. Um, electrical sync, um, uh, sync signals, um, and the accuracy. I think the the time fluctuation can be uh controlled within uh like uh ten picosecond. Okay. Because Great. uh yeah yeah. Great, thank you. Uh, other questions in the room. Hey, uh, thanks for the talk. So when you referred to this uh, one nanosecond recovery time of this multi-pixel array that you had is for the detectors, um, what exactly do you mean by that? Is that like when you're back to full efficiency of 80% after one nanosecond, or are you only starting to recover then? Oh, um, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, uh, when I mean the, uh, the, when I say the recovery time, I mean, that uh, the the detector that at least one pixel of the detector can detect uh the photon when the photon comes, and I I'm not sure if this means that the detector uh, recovers to the full efficiency, but as the uh, as as our characterization results shows, I think um the the efficiency can reach very high with a uh, relatively high photon flux input. So um I think that can be um can be seen as a, a full recovery. Yeah so uh, because when when one pixel of the multi-pixel SNSPD uh is dead, the other pixel can still fire when the photon comes. And uh I think in under this condition the efficiency of the SNSPD uh, the average efficiency of the SNSPD can be seen as um, as the full efficiency. Okay, thank you.